Hello, I'm Ralph Ann, the Confidence Coach, and for 30 years, I've helped women show up looking and feeling their absolute best. So today, I'm joining you with another 15 minutes of fame, and I am so excited because today I get to meet with Rhonda Wolford, and for those of you that have been following me on social media and you've seen this amazing pageant queen that is doing her thing in dance... Um, <laughs> She's doing a lot of other things, but um, for a lot of reasons, that dance really resonated with me, and we'll talk more about it. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to bring Rhonda on, and you'll get to learn a little bit more about her. Hi, good morning. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm a little bit under the weather. I apologize for not being present, but I am here. I'm here for you, definitely. I I'm honored. appreciate it. I appreciate it, and hopefully you'll be better soon. Um, so I wanted to first, you know, introduce, I've introduced you, but for those of, you know, the viewers that don't know, you know, I am doing this pageant queen series and it's kind of like we shared some footage for my documentary that I'm working on. And so just tell everybody a little bit, you know, about yourself, where you live and how you got into pageantry. Sure. Um, I am a native Californian and I was born and raised in LA, but we moved to Orange County in the uh, early 80s. And I danced uh, for a short period of my life. Uh, I have two bachelor's degrees and a master's degree. I studied meteorology. I went storm chasing throughout the Midwest. I used to work at a few TV stations and radio stations, uh, but I left uh, that to marry my husband and try to have a family. And we ended up having three dogs, <laughs> my, which which they're in heaven now. We miss them. We're probably going to get a couple more. And um, my husband is a retired physician. But uh, going back to about 16 years old, I stopped dancing, but I had gotten into pageantry and I won my first pageant, Miss Hawaiian Gardens in high school. And that's where yeah. I got the bug for pageantry. And I really wanted to be Miss California USA. I tried for a couple years and I just couldn't crack, you know, make my way into the top six. I got to the top 15 and my boyfriend, who is my husband now, he said, you know what, I think you need to give this some time and uh, get your education. So that's when I started pursuing all my bachelor's degrees and going into TV and radio. and But I still had this burning desire to compete. I would watch the pageant every single year. I'd sit down and I knew when Miss USA was gonna be on or Miss mm -hmm. Universe. And I would just feel that um, a little bit of disappointment. And mm -hmm. I, I never thought that at age 50 that I would actually get back on stage in a swimsuit and compete. I, I never saw that coming. Not in a million years. <laughs> Understandably so. Oh my I, gosh. Yeah. I am competing after 25 years of retirement. So we think. And yeah, of yes. course, I come back, you know, at age 49 with the pageant that has a swimsuit competition at, you know, three kids later at age 49. Yeah, why, why thought, do we do that? Why do we do that to ourselves? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, I'm like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's just break the ice with, you know, heels and a swimsuit in front of strangers after 25 years. Yeah. But yeah. So I can, I can definitely, definitely relate. Um, but it, it seemed like, though, like anything else, and it's kind of, you know, cliche to say it's like riding a bike because it looks like you literally just fell right back into <laughs> the role of pageantry. So had you been doing any coaching or judging in the meantime, or was it just kind of a natural for you? You know, I hadn't done any coaching. Um, I do not desire to be a coach because I think I take things too, um, too much to heart. And um, I know how I coached myself. I was very strict on myself, um, but I just, I watched pageantry so much and i just i love it i call it mind body and soul and i just mm. i i just got bit by this this bug when i was 16 years old and i just it just would not go away and i thought it would just dissipate just disappear <laughs> and i i said you know what it's going to help me get back in shape right so I, I sort of strategized by looking at swimsuit and i said if i can get swimsuit together then everything else i think will fall into place 
Um, and I look at swimsuit and not as being the skinniest girl on stage, but being the healthiest person, being proud right. of my body, being confident, um, no matter what size I was going to be at. I knew that uh, if I uh, took time out of my day to work on myself, that's how I look at the swimsuit competition. It gave me the time to say, no, this is my time for me to take a walk, to eat healthy. So I, I, I look at, I try to look at pageantry in a more a healthy way than I think that uh, people give pageantry credit for. And that's why I love it so much. And I think that's why I just fell back into it. And I'm, I'm a competitor, you know, I want it to win. I, I was going after that Mrs. America title. Uh, but when I signed up in California, uh, the pageant system introduced the American. And I thought, well, what's the American? Mm. And the director said, well, you know what, that means that you get two chances at a title. And I thought, well, this is a good, a good opportunity, <laughs> right? You know? That sounds I, like a be better odds. I, I love, and you're the system, you know, that you're in. And that's one of the things that I wanted to really bring to light, you know, doing these interviews and then moving on to the documentary was that there's so many different systems and organizations and different pageants that you can be, you know, a part of. I was, you know, a consultant for the Miss America program for about 14 years. So because wow. I have just that love for talent, you know, and academics and interview, you know, all things Miss America. But, mm -hmm. you know, as I got older and started to get exposed and when I was in pageants, mind you, there was no social media. So right. when I came back, I was just like, what? This is, this is some good stuff, y'all. We can see like everything behind the scenes that's going on. And it really just started to shine a spotlight on all the beautiful opportunities with all these different systems and organizations. And, you know, your pageant, like you said, the American, that was like kind of like a little, my first little bit of exposure I had to the organization that you represent. And I thought, wow, this is really amazing. Seemed like they were very into, um, you know, social platform and community service. Which actually brings me um, to the next point. I did want to talk about, you know, your social platform and how, you know, how it kind of intertwines with, you know, just with your your daily life and sure. you know, your belief system. Sure. And I think I think that's why I'm under the weather. Yesterday I had an event at a college. Uh, it was a health fair. As, as students are going back to school, we want to make sure that they know that they can dial the number nine eight eight if they're you know, having a mental health breakdown or if they see a friend that's struggling. So it's important for me to, even though I don't, you know, I'm not in sash and crown, the most important thing for me is to do my outreach. And I love doing that. And my platform came about when I was doing, uh, participating in pageants before, I really didn't know um, what, kind, what my platform was. Uh, I would represent the American Heart Society or breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I don't, I have friends who've uh, had cancer before breast cancer and ovarian cancer, but I hadn't. But this time when I got back into pageantry, I thought, I prayed about it and I said, okay, God, if we're going to do this, I need to be real. I need to be authentic because right. I don't, I don't think this is going to work for me. I, it's not going to be a good investment. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I decided that I would share about uh, uh, attempting suicide in 2014. As I shared with you earlier, I married my husband and we had tried for a number of years to have children. And I have two sisters and 37 nieces and nephews. So you can do the math on that. <laughs> what? what? I don't think I can do that math. You that know, I, I, I think that's math that I cannot do. Yeah. <laughs> that I mean, they're, they're triplets and twins. There is a <laughs> fertility bed of fertility there. And I just thought, well, why, you know, what is wrong with me? Why not me? And then I had a dear friend of mine who went through IVF, had her twins, and then she got ovarian cancer and she lost her battle with it. And her daughters are now 21. Um, so I, I, I was just struggling. Do I go, do I do IVF? Do I try this? Do I do that? Mm. And, um, and I really just felt less of a woman and, um, you know, I didn't make my mark in pageantry. I wasn't hitting all the goals that I wanted and life was just crashing in on me. And in 2014, I just, I just wanted to give up. 
but I was very fearful going back into pageantry. Do I mention that this S word suicide? I go, that is just, oh my God, that's horrific. Um, so, but like you said, you know, doing pageantry now, we have Facebook, we have all the social media. So I decided to, to go on social media, start a Facebook account. Um, well, I had a Facebook account, but I joined a group called a Suicide Thoughts and Prevention Sanctuary. And I started to share my story and I, I was talking to people in Ireland, Nepal, uh, Argentina, uh, and it was, we were all had this in common. And I thought, okay, well, I think this is my platform. I have to talk about this. Wow. And I became an admin on the site and I actually saved three people from overdosing, um, which in one of them, she was in England and she's still a friend of mine. And so I just saw the miracles could happen. And as I got involved in pageantry, I learned that my director's sister died by suicide. Wow. I learned that four other of the other contestants had people who in their lives who died by suicide. So, I mean, this was all just kind of being revealed to me that this platform, um, I, I can be the voice. And that's one of our hashtags, be the voice. So I started a podcast that I just talk about my story and how I uh, got into recovery and started to build the desire to want to live and not only to live, but to thrive and to be mm -hmm. joyful and to be grateful. I think that I was so empty. I was so bankrupt on not feeling grateful, just being alive and, and just appreciating all the small things in my life. And um, I thought that, you know, pageantry could help me you know, build my character back up, get me to go back on stage and feel proud of myself. And, and um, I, it was like a renewal. And I think that's mm -hmm. what you saw when you watch that dance, because I tell you that dance, <laughs> I, <laughs> it just, it's, it's amazing that God gave me that opportunity um, to do that. And so th that's why I love pageantry because it's, you can do more soul searching um, with pageantry, if you really apply yourself, if you really find your true platform, you can really discover things about yourself that are just amazing that you never really knew before right. you give up on yourself. And I love that it becomes a double blessing because like you were saying with your platform, you know, once you started to share, you know, some of the struggles that you had yourself, you know, it kind of opened, you know, opened up the the window of communication for, you know, all these other people who could relate, you know, and I've often said, you know, as a coach myself, I do talk to a lot of people, you know, um, about being authentic and what's most personal is most universal, you know, is what we hear and say, but it's true, you know, it's true that if you open up you know, and say, you know, maybe something that you're dealing with or struggling with, or even just thoughts that have, you know, crossed your mind here and there, no matter what it is, that somebody else, you know, is is having that same struggle. And I don't know if you remember when we were in grade school, the teacher would always say, there's no dumb questions because yeah. the question that you ask, someone else is also thinking, they're just afraid to ask. That, so that is be the so one. <laughs> You that know, exactly. be the one to ask the question. And I always say, you know, I'm just going to always say, I'll just take one for the team. Like we're saying, yes. getting up after all these years, I represent, you know, the community of women over 40 and also the plus size community. Right. And I was approached by a plus size pageant, like, you know, do our pageant because you'll stand a really good chance of winning. I said, or I could do a straight size pageant. Mm -hmm. do really well and be an inspiration for women who are a size 10 and over that don't have, <laughs> you know, maybe the right. courage and confidence to do a straight size pageant. I'll right. take one for the team. And I just really feel like, you know, that's what it is. It's just kind of putting yourself out there a little bit, being authentic and saying, you know what? It's not that serious. I'd rather be vulnerable and authentic if it's going to help and bless someone else. And in turn, you were able to like, you know, just showcase this, this inner light, you know, and I, I get choked up and I stumble mm -hmm. on this because every time I think about that dance,
I oh, literally, wow. the first time I saw it, and I had been following you, you know, we'd become friends on Facebook a few months back. Right. And so I'd see, you know, in the pageant and I'd see different things you were doing. And for some reason, like I said, that was the thing that just really resonated with me. And I could just see like the whole, the spirit behind it, which is mm -hmm. what I think is most, like I said, I've showed my mom and I showed my sister. I'm like, <laughs> have y'all seen this? Have y'all seen this one? And my husband, I was like, look, look, look. And, you know, just wanted everybody to see because I felt like it wasn't just a dance. It felt like it was a celebration. And it, it really was. And I could feel the celebration. And even though I wasn't there in person, which now I'm like, oh, man, I wish I was there in person. But even the video itself um, and trust and believe it will be shared again because I'm going to get my editors to bring it on <laughs> and put it in this video so that people who haven't seen it can oh, see. Can I am see. honored. I am so honored. <laughs> It'll definitely be like, I've already decided, okay, my editors are going to come in here. We'll, you know, we'll have some pictures of you since you're under the weather today. Um, you know, we'll be able to showcase some, some yeah, sure. we'll be able to have some photos and we'll show a clip of the video. And, but I just really wanted to get you on today to, to talk and, you know, to be an inspiration because I really feel it's just that, you know, I have representing, you know, women 40 and over who are underrepresented, underrepresented yeah. in the world. It's pageantry is, is just what you said. It's about a lot of self-discovery. It's about learning a lot about yourself at the end of the competition you've won if you've been on stage regardless. But I'm like you, I'm competitive. I'm like, I want to win. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to solidify exactly. the win. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to solidify the win, but yes. you walk away still becoming a better person, you know? Oh yes. And there's always, there's always another, there's always another pageant should you desire which actually brings me to um, our next question. So I wanted to know, so what's next? I mean, I see you busy and doing your volunteer work and you're just, you know, you have not stopped, which hopefully today you'll get some tea and some TLC and <laughs> be able to rest a little bit. But little what's bit. next on the horizon? I mean, any more pageant competitions coming up or... Well, I'm going to give you some breaking news, I think. I'm going to, yeah, I, I, it's not official, but uh, we are looking at Mrs. World. We are nice. we're looking into that. Um, uh, I cannot represent American because that is for uh, the current title holder. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I am, we're, we're looking into seeing if there is a way uh, that I can compete for Mrs. World. And I would love to do that. I, I love pageantry. I would love to be a part of the international sisterhood. Uh, that is, that's something, I mean, like I said, I watched Miss Universe for years and I always dream, dreamed about being a part of the international community and, and bonding with women. And um, so this pageant is also giving me an opportunity to do some self-discovery about my heritage and um, and that's that's where pageantry is not the shallow, you know, vapid experience. You can really dig deep and find out exactly who you are. And mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned something when I, you know we both like to win, and I own that. I like to win. Mm -hmm. I own it. Um, but on the other side, when I see women who don't win, and then you see the ugliness come out, wow. I always tell them, I say, that's your gift. That's right. where you, because you didn't realize how ugly you could be, how, mm -hmm. how, what, that's what God is revealing to you to fix because you should be, or I don't want to say should, but we all want to be able to support the person who wins and, right. and bless her because it's hard being on the other side of it. I mean, being a national title holder, we, uh, we, we had our moments. We, we struggle. We're stressed out. We want to do our best for you. We want, um, you know, we want to hear from our community. Oh, okay. Rhonda, you know, she, Miss American 2021, she did all this, that was done. And we don't want to hear that. You think that we wasted our year. Right. So, um, because each layer, as you, as you go, uh, as you make it to the top, you know, there's always more criticism, uh, that, that you hear. So, um, it is important to, to learn all these little character lessons 
uh, in your life that you can get from pageantry. They always say it's, you have to learn how to be a graceful loser mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and a gracious winner and share it. And that was one of the things that I did. I hope I did. I think that my class of 2021 felt that I would highlight each of the states when it was uh, their state pageant. I would. I do, remember. I, I remember. I, would, <laughs> I was yeah, following. <laughs> I tried to do that. And even when they announced the new queen, I would uh, say goodbye to the former and just make sure that there was some sort of recognition um, for her because uh, this is our title. That's how I look at it. It's right. And it's not just, it's not just my title. Um, and I think, um, you know, I just, I go back to the dance and I just, I just thank Carolyn Skyers. I just remember her always uh, making, you know, patting my elbows when I had my arms up in the first position. Now I want those tight. I want your fingers to come out <laughs> gracefully. I want that to be slow. And you know, you, those lessons that I didn't forget for the last 35 years, wow. I mean, literally this opportunity to do that dance was, was like in the back of my mind, like, well, I hope I get to dance, but I just, you know, I never thought it would really happen. And, um, and when I thought I would dance, I thought they would ask me to do more. And, but the song that they chose, I thought, oh my goodness, this is, this can be a really beautiful moment if we just tone it down Mm -hmm. Take it slow and just let everybody in and let's just feel the moment. And um, this is like I shared with you earlier when I had done plays and um, when I was in my teens, I was always in the background wanting to be in the front. Mm -hmm. And here I am at 53 and they said, no, we want you center <laughs> stage. And I tell you at rehearsal, each time I would step back, they say, no, step up. We want you in the front <laughs> the whole time. And I would think, are you kidding me, God? Are you playing with me? <laughs> you know, and then they only choreographed the first, you know, five, eight cows. And they said, you just figure out the rest. We are, we need to work with the other girls. They don't, you know, they're not dancers. This is great. You, and I, it somehow made the show go easier that um, I was able to kind of do my part and they did their part. So it really was teamwork. And I think that's the essence of, of what you saw um, and each step that we we developed that dance, you know, like I told you earlier, I bought this jumpsuit that I thought I bought and then I didn't buy it. And then I did. Then she did sell it to me. And uh, then I had these disco shoes and I thought, can I dance in these Mark Defangs? They're six inches high, but we'll give it a go. It was perfect. You know, so I mean, everything looked like it just I mean, it was it was just it was meant to be. I mean, it was literally everything looked like it just. It just flowed and I'm a very go with the flow kind of person and it did. Everything just came together beautifully. And that's the word that I use when I keep, when I share it. So anybody who sees this video and that's the word that I use, I said, this is just one of the most beautiful moments in pageantry that I have seen in all the, I don't know. I started in pageants maybe when I was 14 years old. So about, oh yeah, I don't goodness. know. Yeah. I don't I know what, so wherever that honored. math is. 35 plus years, same. Um, and it was just, it's lovely. And if you really take it for what it is, and I mean, it's still just breathtaking. It literally still oh. just takes my breath away. That is probably very cliche, but it's so true. I literally get a loss of words, which does not happen often. <laughs> I, do not, I am not at a loss for words like ever, but um I just, I love that. So I do want, um, so tell everybody like where to find you. Cause you know, oh, you're okay. on this journey and we want to stay in touch. I'm definitely going to bring you back yes. so that we can, you know, recap and, you know, we'll be able to have a different conversation because, you know, my state pageant will be behind me and then we'll, you know, it'll just be a different conversation, which makes right. it interesting. It's like where they are now and kind of, <laughs> Sure, where absolutely. are they now kind of thing so I yeah want so where always i want us always to stay connected oh definitely. Ab absolutely. Definitely. absolutely absolutely well I, I call myself the good influence her on social media and that's really what my life is about i want to be a good influence all those lessons from my grandmother to my dance teacher my mom um just to be a good influence so the good influencer on social media and 
Um, I, I wrote a, a book. I'm actually uh, doing the second edition, adding another 100 pa pages. And the money, the proceeds from the book go to um, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And um, I have my podcast, which I started season three. And I just, it's just really free, free flowing like this conversation. It's just my thoughts, my experience, uh, my honesty, my truth. I think that's all that I can give you is my truth. Um, I want people to be better and do better. Um, I, I want everybody to be happy and enjoy their life and not take things for granted, just the small things. I think that's where we get caught up with it. And especially with social media, there's so yeah. much going on today. And that's why it was, I think that's why I'm a, I am a little sick because I was doing so much interfacing with people. It was nice to not, you know, wow. have the, the laptop right there and, right. you know, be typing all the time. I actually was hugging people and, you know, talking and, um, and sharing my story and, and hearing from other people that, uh, how they have helped save a life too. And, and talking with teachers because I think that that was most important too, is to make sure that the professors are not missing, <clears throat> pardon me, the warning signs or uh, anything in their students, you know, just because a student may not be paying attention, you know, doesn't mean that they don't care about the class. There could be some right. things going on that need to be addressed. So um, yeah, the good influencer, I'm on Facebook, Instagram. I just started TikToking. I mean, I'm I'm getting I'm getting a little <laughs> better at that. We'll see. I'm trying Snapchat. Um, that's you know, and I I love pageantry. You can find me at the Mrs. America organization. Uh, I plan. I'm so happy that I landed uh, with them. Uh, I love Elaine Marmel. She is wonderful, and her husband came up with this American uh, title uh, at 3 a.m. in the morning, and wow. I, I I know, and and look what he's given me. Oh my wow. God. What to you, I wouldn't have been wow. able to do that dance. You know, we wouldn't have had all of this. And and I said mm -hmm. in my farewell speech, I said that to a man that I've never met and I'm never going to meet. You know, but I know his spirit is here with me, and I'm just so honored to have been um, the second Mrs. American uh, to be able to do as much as I did to hopefully, I, I believe I did to to give that pageant uh, that title substance and desire i want other women to want to be that to want to share that uh to to want to travel and i went to wyoming kentucky hawaii all these alaska mm. all places tennessee i worked with jackie and david siegel with the victoria's voice foundation um just all these opportunities and it was so important uh, for me uh, not only as a woman, but as a black woman to be able to uh, communicate and tell my story, because there's a, a, a statistic out there that says that black women do not die by suicide. What in the world? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we are, yeah, we're <laughs> some of the hardest working women. We carry a lot of burdens on our shoulders. Mm. So we, you know, we, it, it just, it shows me that I, um, I'm just blessed to be able to to share my story, which I thought I needed to be hush hush about um, and be embarrassed about. And I find that there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Um, if anything, talking about it um, has has helped me and other people to be able to help other people. And the giving just keeps going. And that's what I love. I love that that dance is on video. You share it as much as you want, as much as it makes you happy. I hope it makes everybody happy and joy. I hope everybody puts that song on and they dance. Yeah, it's actually on my. It's the, actually on a playlist of mine. It's it's one of is one of my all time favorites. I, I just I love it, and I am um, you know I look forward to I look forward to you know us and our and our friendship as it yes. evolves, um, you know, from hometown girls, Inglewood. And yeah. I just, you know, the more that I hear, the more that I love, and I just want to continue, you know, to be inspired, inspire other people with your story. And, you know, basically just, we're going to keep in touch. Um, we're going to keep Most in definitely. touch. Most so definitely. I thank you again so much. Like I said, I know that you were feeling under the weather, but 
We are going to declare rest and healing within 24 hours. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So if you will receive that. Thank um, you. Definitely sending good vibes your way. And I just, I appreciate it. So I will have all of Rhonda's information in the show notes. And, you know, that way you all can reach out, you know, subscribe to her podcast and, you know, just be encouraged and be blessed by everything that she has to offer. And um, again, here's to you becoming the best version of you. Thank you. Amen.